Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Nicole Gaucher. She's with the UK Cooperative Extension Service, Extension Plant Pathologist. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Now, we were having a good laugh a little bit earlier when we were talking about this, but today you're going to talk about mistletoe. That's and right. That's Christmas, right. Christmas, we think of mistletoe and hanging it up and kissing under the mistletoe. That's right. But it actually has quite an existence in kind of the plant world and you were telling me about like the meaning so so I'd like for you to tell our viewers okay all about right. mistletoe well mistletoes are parasitic plants so they they're hemi parasitite parasites so they are partially parasitic so they will inject their their roots or their hostoria into an existing plant so they get a lot of their they get their water and nutrients from the tree that it's it's parasitizing but they also photosynthesize and they make some of their own food so out of the 1,500 species of mistletoes in the world, oh, wow. some of them are highly parasitic. Some of, some of them are only slightly parasitic and depend more on photosynthesis. So you've kind of got this mix in there. Um, here in the U.S., I think there are 29 species of mistletoes, and one, only one, is native to Kentucky. Only one. Now, is it highly parasitic or is it one of the medium it's, ones? It's about medium, about halfway, um, and it is a forodendron, which is an oak mistletoe, specific to oak. So when oh. it's native here, we may have some of the others that have crossed some borders, but our native forodendron is an oak mistletoe. So how, since it's parasitic, how does it get there? It gets there by birds, so the seeds uh, germinating, so the seeds have to be deposited on a susceptible host twig, so it has to be a fairly soft twig, and birds eating the seeds will deposit it. Hmm. Now, you told me the meaning earlier, okay. <laughs> which I think is kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> so, mistletoe means dung on a twig, and that was originally named because birds would deposit those seeds onto twigs of of plants. And, and, and dung on a twig, how that became so romanticized in our it culture. Is, <laughs> it became romanticized in the 1500s in England when servants would utilize mistletoe for kissing. Well, <laughs> did you know it's a parasitic plant? We do have some native in Kentucky, but if somebody were to see mistletoe, I mean, would you recommend that they could just go ahead and cut it and bring it in, or how does that work? Well, you know, as a plant pathologist and as a tree hugger, if you will, I would tell you to cut it out and get it out. That's one of the only times I ever recommend a, a, a plastic Christmas decoration is go <laughs> with a plastic version of mistletoe if you want to kiss uh, on Christmas. But um, really, it's depositing of those seeds that's going to spread it. So if you have mistletoe out in your landscape, it's really important that you cut it out. But really, if you look in forested areas this time of year in particular, you can see it. In summertime, it's camouflaged by other leaves. But this time of year, you can pretty much see mistletoe. It's usually high in the air, so it's usually not so easy to bring into your house, right? Not so easy and to get. <laughs> so, but if you, do, if you do have the temptation, I kind of encourage you to go ahead not take those risks and bring it bring um, well destroy it excuse me and then maybe buy an artificial one for that <laughs> and I've never heard, heard Nicole say that <laughs> before because you know some people say well I found like they, they've hit a jackpot right they found this mistletoe and they, mm -hmm. they want to bring it in are there dangers to bringing it in or um, so mistletoe, um, so in the 1500s, the tradition actually was when you kiss someone under the mistletoe, you ate one of the berries. Oh. The berries are toxic to humans. It won't kill you, but it will make you sick. So um, the women who would receive the kiss would eat a berry. And once all the berries were gone from the mistletoe, the mistletoe would be taken down. So that was the original tradition. So, but don't eat the berries. They're not, <laughs> <laughs> they're poisonous. But the rest of the plant is not poisonous. <laughs> so all these traditions you need to check into to find out the it's truth. It's great history. nighttime reading. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommend it. <laughs> so certainly appreciate you bringing all this information about the mistletoe to us, but 
If somebody does find it, destroy it. That's right, that's right. Pruning it out, it's really, it's easy on a young plant because you can reach. Don't wait until the tree gets too big for you to reach. All right, and do we have publications about how to identify if people were kind of wondering or do they just need to get online? We and do search? not, we that's do. one thing we have not tackled yet. Maybe we can do that for fun, but there, the UK has a lot, UK meaning United Kingdom, has a lot of mistletoe um, publications because it's much more common there. All right, well certainly <laughs> appreciate the information, Nicole. A good laugh for you to, <laughs> to learn about mistletoe this morning. But if you have questions, contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.